welcome back to our vegan kitchen. We're making tofu today. Again. <laughs> and again. This is actually my third attempt at tofu. I look at it this way. I've made all the mistakes so you don't have to. And I've made quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get talking tofu. You're going to need a blender because that is what you're going to pulverize your beans with in this video. I'm also planning on making a video with my slow juicer because you could also use that to make uh, tofu or soy milk. Basically what you're doing is making soy milk and turning it into tofu just as if you were taking milk and turning it into cheese. It's the same kind of thing. So I've got my beans here that have been soaking overnight and I've just drained them. Don't worry about the ingredients. All three of them with their quantities will be in the info box below. You're also going to need something to strain out the uh, soy milk. I've got a nut bag. You could also use a uh, cheesecloth. You're gonna need something to mold your tofu with. I've got a traditional Japanese tofu box, I guess you would call this, right? Sure. <laughs> this is what I've always seen when people made tofu. And you're gonna need what's gonna curdle your soy milk. We're using some nigiri. Is that how you say it? I hope so. <laughs> you could also use lemon juice. You could use vinegar. You could use Epsom salts. I'm using the traditional Japanese sea water nigiri. And you're gonna need some water. You might also want to use a thermometer so that you get your uh, soy milk at the right temperature when you coagulate. So like I said, these have been soaking overnight. My blender is not commercial sized. So I'm going to be doing half of these at a time. So I'm going to put half my soybeans into my Blendtec. About half. I'm not going to obsess about if that's half or not. <laughs> so we're going to get the top on. Yes, Whoa. I know. It's my third time. We are going to blend these on the soup cycle, which will pulverize pretty much anything. It's a 90 second cycle and go. These have been blended, you're gonna want a very large pot because this is gonna be foamy and you don't want it to go all over your stove. And let me tell you right now, soy milk is a real bee to clean off the stove because it gets all weird and like sticky and bleh. So also you might want to put a clothespin over your nose because this smells like garbage. It's really gross. It is. Some people cook it first and then <laughs> strain it. I don't think it really matters. You could, I've seen people do it both ways. I'm going to strain it first and then cook it because if you cook it first, then you have to deal with the hot straining of it. And you might burn your hands or some people use two bowls together, but I'm gonna do it the easy way. So here's the first half going in. So we're just gonna let that sit while we uh, blend the second half of the beans. Don't worry, all the measurements are going to be in the info box, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to blend it up on the soup cycle and then add it to the bag. It's all in there. So make sure you use your little loop so that the bag doesn't uh, fall down there and then you lose all your soy milk. But we're just going to take this, and you can see it's already draining out pretty well. You're going to want to twist it, and all of the liquid part's going to come out. The fiber or the pulp is going to be left behind. That is the okara. You don't throw that out. You can use that if you like. In uh, some people put it in smoothies. Some people bake cookies with it. You could probably use it in a variety of ways. Consult Google. I'm sure they have a million things that you could use it for. Or just throw it out if you don't want. <laughs> but this is going to take a minute to get all of the... Um, liquid out of here and then we'll check back when we're just left with the liquid. All right guys, uh, the soybeans have been milked. I've got my pot of raw milk here. I'm going to take it over to the stove and I'm going to put it on medium. Now I'm going to put it a little bit lower on my stove because it runs quite hot, but aim for medium. Here's the okara. You can see that it's uh, very dry. It's very light. So. This is very foamy. <laughs> I made the mistake in the past of not taking the foam off. And if you don't take the foam off, this is gonna boil over all over the place. And it's gonna be really hard to see when the milk is actually boiling. 
So you can just take the foam off and get rid of it because it's not gonna it's not gonna do a damn thing for you. So we'll just get rid of that. And we're gonna uh, bring this up to the boil rather slowly. You don't wanna, you know, shotgun this up on high because it's gonna burn and your tofu is gonna taste like garbage. So you want a nice mellow tasting, pretty much flavorless tofu, so we don't want to burn it. So this is going to take a few minutes to uh, bring it up to the boil, but I'll check back when it's boiling and show you what we're going to do next. This has been simmering for about five minutes now. Um, we couldn't show it when it was boiling because Maggie was on Sorry, the Sorry, I was on the phone. <laughs> Alright, so as soon as it comes up to the boil, I recommend you turn it down to a simmer because you don't want it to burn. That is your main objective, your prime directive. Do not let this burn and be careful uh, to keep it moving because on the bottom it's going to stick if you don't. And make sure you use a heavy bottom pan because you don't want that heat cooking uh you know a big clump of it and then you get a piece in your tofu and it's not good so just when in doubt keep it moving so we're going to cook this for 10 minutes and then we're going to turn the heat off and let it sit all right so this has cooled down a little bit i just turned the heat on again because it dipped down below 160 degrees we want this between 160 and 170 ideally 163 Okay. Don't ask me why. <laughs> but I guess that's the ideal temperature. So let's uh, give it a second here and get this up to the exact right temperature because I don't want to do this to again. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so we're almost at 160. So that should just take another second. Stick that in there. <laughs> now we're going to mix the coagulant. I've just um, heated up a little bit of water. We're going to use about half a cup. And then we're going to mix in our Japanese seawater. Well, it's in crystal form now. Just make sure that this is dissolved completely. Okay, that's very simple to do. That also comes in a liquid that you mix with water. So this is just at the right temperature now. So we're going to turn that off. We're going to take this. And we're going to... Um, Pour it in, and I believe the trick with this is if you would like large curds, you don't mix it very much. So we're just going to mix it a little bit to get it going. Give us curds. Oh, I can see it already. Look at that on the spoon. It's already starting oh, to clump up. How relieved are you? Extremely. <laughs> So we're going to let this sit for at least 10 minutes, maybe longer. We're going to check it after 10 minutes, and hopefully we'll have our curds and whey. We have success. Yay! <laughs> All right, so let's put them all together. I got this from Amazon, and uh, basically you just put it together. You want the uh, whey to be able to drip out. So you take your cheesecloth. You don't need to buy a fancy mold like this. You can uh, do a makeshift one with like a loaf pan or you don't even have to make it into a block. You can make it into like a round. But you need holes on the bottom, right? Yeah. So you could put like chopsticks on the bottom or like one of those sushi mats would let the water uh, drip through also with some cheesecloth and you can do it. It's gotta be able to drain. Right. So here we go, moment of truth. I've got my strainer. And yes, you can oh. see the curds. What a relief. <laughs> so we're just going to put it in the box. Going to strain out. It actually smells like tofu. Can you smell it? Yeah, it does. It, smells... it doesn't smell bad anymore. No, once you cook it, that bad smell goes away. That's just the raw soy smell, which is uh, not good. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could get to the point of cooking it, it smells really nice. It smells like tofu now. Mm-hmm. So we're just going to strain all of this into here, and then uh, we're going to cover it up. All right, so it could have um, curdled up a little bit more, but I'm going with this because... <laughs> <laughs> you guys should have seen what we had the first two times. This is like a miracle compared to that. All right, so you could already see that the clear whey is dripping out on the bottom. We're going to uh, wrap this up like a little swaddled baby. <laughs> Oh no! 
<laughs> All right, actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that drain a little bit more before we put any weight on it, but you get the idea. This is gonna go on top, and then we're going to put a one kilogram weight on top of it, and that is what's gonna press out the rest of the water, the whey, the, the soy water. And uh, we're probably gonna leave this for at least 20 minutes, if not a little bit longer, and then we should have our finished tofu. <laughs> I know, right? Right. I don't know if this is turning out as good as I thought it was, but I think I should call this video a novice making tofu. Tofu masters help me. <laughs> so if you've made tofu before and you've got tips or tricks for me, critique my work. And We'd let love me to know. hear the tips. Yes, because I'd love to make a progression of me uh, improving every time because... I think making tofu is like a practice. You get better and you pick up more every time you it's do like it. It's like yoga. Right. So let's unearth our box of tofu and see what's going on here. I'm not going to lie. I used more force than just putting a weight on it because I don't think I used enough coagulant or maybe I didn't mix it enough. But um, I wanted to press out as much water as possible because I was going for extra firm. And I did uh, tighten up the, um, the cloth as well because I kept checking it to see if it was um, firm enough yet. So this might be just more of a silken tofu. But I think what we need to do is take this off. Okay, okay. It's a little promising. Yeah, it looks nice. It looks a little tubby. <laughs> so let's open up the present. And I already um, emptied the, uh -huh. the bottom thing once. Uh, there was a lot of liquid. All right, so not as firm as I would like, because you could see some of it is still sticking to the cloth. But firmer than I thought it would be. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Not bad. The bottom is definitely a little bit firmer than the top. Mm-hmm. Let's see. All right, looking good. Not too bad. This would probably be good, uh, good consistency for like a scramble. Bless you. Yes. Or you could bake this and get mm -hmm. more of the moisture out and firm it up. Look at that. Not too bad for my actual first try <laughs> getting this far. Yeah. So I'm very excited to uh, cook that up. Yeah. And again, if you guys have any tips or tricks or just, hey, you did that wrong. I won't feel bad at all. Just tell me exactly what I did wrong and we'll make a progression video and, and we'll, you can, you'll be my teacher and I'll be your student. You did it. Oh wait, you touched that. I don't want to high five. Uh. <laughs> all right guys, here's a little uh, bonus footage for you. I took the uh, tofu that I made before and I did my crispy tofu recipe with it in the air fryer and I have to say, it's spectacular. It really is. If you look at it, this outside part is nice and crisp. We've got the Frank's Red Hot on there. But then this part is nice and spongy. Yeah. So it, it gives a really nice uh, bite. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not mm -hmm. too dried out. That's delicious. And it's not too wet. And it just, it, it's like a dream. It tastes fresh. It does taste fresh. It doesn't taste like it's been sitting on a store shelf for like a month. Yeah, you can see here like the yeah, little holes. Yeah, the air in there. Air pockets. It's amazing and delicious. Enjoy it. Oh, good. <laughs> You're going to eat the whole thing. Probably. I hope you try it. It really is not that bad. <laughs> really. And until next time.